going to lead us in practice. Recording in progress. Um, and if not, we've got them covered, but we're so glad that you all are here. Welcome on this Sunday afternoon to our online gathering uh, with Imaginarium and our pride celebration. Um, but first and foremost, we wanna wish a very happy Father's Day um, to anyone that is a father that is listening. And, and we define father not only as someone who helped to give life, but also those people that help to nurture life. Um, and I know that's many of you. And so we just wanna say we honor you and we celebrate you on this day as well. We're going to cover a lot of things. Um, my name is Melissa. I am the co-founder and have the privilege of helping to lead this beautiful space and community. Um, Imaginarium exists um, for us to imagine a better world and then figure out how we intentionally make that so. Um, we are a nonprofit and a non-religious space that is welcoming of all people. Um, we gather and sort of our ethos is based around the idea of three things. One, we believe in the inherent magic, um, worth of all living things things and all people. Secondly, we believe in the inherent connection that we have then to ourselves, to each other, and to the natural world around us. And finally, and equally then, the inherent responsibility that we then share to ourselves, to each other, and to the natural world. And we are not ones here to tell you what that responsibility is as much to challenge you to ask yourself daily, what is my responsibility to myself and the world today, and how can I make it a better place? So that is why we gather and why we do things like this and why we uh, support and, and create things online. Um, and so we're really, really, really honored that each of you could be here today. We have some practices that we do together to center and ground us and some acknowledgements and statements that we do every time that we're together. Um, and these are participatory. Um, so we invite you to participate with this and, and we'll give instructions for each one. Um, JJ was going to lead us in our first. JJ, are you able to? I can't really see everybody, so unfortunately, okay. I am here, but I right. can't see everybody. <laughs> well, we're glad that you're here. So the practice he was going to lead is what we call our naming practice, um, and you'll understand why he needs to see you in a second. But this is an opportunity for you to introduce yourself um, or remind us of who you are. Tell us where you're dialing in from today or zooming in from, and also to share your pronouns. And so the easiest way for the person that's leading us via Zoom is to call you out, which feels a little redundant but it works and it's the best we can do so i'll call you out today and just unmute and again share your name location and pronouns so let's start with abby lane abby lane i'm in east nashville she her hers Thank you, Abby. Also, I should remind us and forgive me for not saying this is also a practice where you are choosing to take up your space, um, not just in this Zoom and in this gathering that we have today, but also your space in the world. And also a reminder for some of us that often take up too much space, that we talk too much, that we don't leave enough space for others to be very aware of that too. Okay, so next up, uh, Michael Jackson, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Michael Jackson. I'm dialing in from the Donaldson area of Nashville, Tennessee, and my pronouns are he, him, and his. Yes. Lovely. Lovely. He's one of our special guests, so we'll get into more details about that in a few minutes. Also one of our special guests, which will have a little bit more of a formal introduction, is Eric Cox. You are up next. Yes, yes. Grand afternoon, everybody. Pray you're all well and blessed on this day. Um, as I said, my name is Eric Cox in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, him, his, um, you know, depending on the night, uh, she, girl, whatever. So, uh, but he, him, he is. Thank you. We're so glad you're with us. Thank you, Eric. Malia. Hi, I'm Malia Carden. I live in Brentwood, Tennessee, and I use she, her, hers pronouns. Thank you, Malia. Glad you're here. Robin and Aaron, you're up. Hi, folks. My name is Robin, and my pronouns are they, them, there. And I make my home on stolen land, uh, ancestral lands of Cherokee, Shawnee, and Uchi people uh, in what is now called Nashville. And I'm Aaron, and I use they or she pronouns. And um, also in the same room with Robin on this land. Also, two of our special guests, really honored that you're both with us. Can't wait to hear you share. Cindy, you're up next. Hi, Cindy Hoppus, she, her, hers, uh, in Spring Hill, Tennessee. Thank you, Cindy. Alan. 
Hi, I'm Alan, and probably then. Alan, you're starting to break up a little bit. Sorry. That's I'm okay. Alan, I'm from Houston, Texas, and my uh, pronouns are they, them. Great, 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 great. We heard all of that. Thank you, Alan. <laughs> Thomas Twins, our last round of special guest. We're on mute now. Go ahead, Al. Okay, I'm Elliot Thomas. Uh, I call Nash West Nashville home, um, and my pronouns are he, him, his. And I'm his twin brother, Evan. Um, pronouns he, him, his. And I live in, near the Gulch, but I'm currently uh, at Elliot's home in West Nashville. Lovely. So glad y'all are here. Nathan, you're up. Uh, Nathan Johns, uh, he, him, his, and from uh, Nashville. Yay, a new location for you. Yay, so yes. <laughs> Margo, so glad you're here. You're up. Oh, hold on, let's unmute. Hold on, let me unmute you. There we go. Yeah. Hi there. It's good to see you, Melissa. Margo Law, uh, she, hers, uh, and I am Aaron's mom, in case anybody didn't make that leap. And I'm calling in from Musketaquid land, uh, the Nipmuc land, now known as Massachusetts. Uh, and it's very good to be here. Mm, lovely. We're so glad you're here. Doug, you're up. Hello, everybody. Doug Day, Franklin, Tennessee. He, him, is. Lovely. Thank you, Doug. JJ. Hello, I am JJ, and my pronouns are he, him, his, and I am uh, calling in from um, Fayetteville, Tennessee, and I have a friend here. Hello. Uh, my name is Jay. I go by agender pronouns. I am in the same facility as JJ, <laughs> and I do welcome they, them, and it's, it's, or it and it's pronouns, just very rarely. Love it. Thank you both. We're glad you're both here. Leah. Hi, I'm Leah. I'm here in East Nashville and I use she, her pronouns. Lovely, glad you're here. Lauren. Hello, I did not fully think this through. I'm at a swimming pool and I did not think it'd be so obvious I'm not wearing a shirt. <laughs> But here I am. I'm in Franklin, Tennessee, right across the road from you, Melissa. So hit me up later. Um, we're here celebrating Father's Day. Um, so I just stepped outside to the yard. Um, I, gen I usually live in Nashville. My pronouns are she, her, hers. Great to see you all. Lovely. We welcome all, Lauren. <laughs> Thank <Love> you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Up next is Julian. If you're willing. Hello, everybody. My name is Julian J. Walker. I am calling in from uh, the Nashville area, and my pronouns are he, him, and his. Lovely. Welcome. We're glad you're here. And Aaron. Me, Aaron? Hi. Yes. Sorry, Aaron Knight. Yes. Um, I am in Franklin, Tennessee, and my pronouns are she, her, hers. Lovely. Hi. Great, we're so glad everyone is here. I think I got everyone. I was trying to move my screen around. Let me confirm that. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, honored you're each here. And now I'm gonna pass it back to Lauren. Yay, thank you, Melissa. Um, like I said, it's so good to be with you all today. It's been a while since I've seen a lot of your faces. Um, the practice that I'm going to lead is called Tell Me Something Good. Uh, if everyone could please unmute themselves for a brief chaotic moment that we like to do together every time we meet, you are going to sing with me the following line, but I'm going to count us off. So the line goes like this, tell me something good. And I'm going to count five, six, seven, eight, and we're all going to sing it together unmuted. Okay. Five, six, seven, eight. Tell, tell me something, something good. good. Yes. Yes. Thomas Twins represent. <laughs> I could hear you loud and clear. Um, okay, that sounded great. Um, this practice is all about naming the good, which is a powerful practice to do as a collective group, but I think um, it's also a great reminder of something we should be doing daily and making it an intention to name the good in our personal lives daily. 
So we're just going to take it a second and name the good that you're seeing in your personal lives and the world and the news. Um, anything that you feel like is bringing light and love and joy to this world, we'd love to hear about it. I can't see everyone's screens because I'm on my phone, so I can't see if you're raising your hand, but Melissa, if you see people raising their hands, please call them out. I see Leah. My something good is that I got to travel for the first time since the beginning of the pandemic and got to visit my best friend and her husband that I haven't seen in two years or three years and their two-year-old daughter that I got to meet for the first time. And really it brought me so much joy just to spend time with them. There were like little baby birds in the nest right outside of their house that we got to like watch the, the bird parents feed. And I don't know, it's just like my favorite thing in life right now is the way this little two-year-old says my name, like, ma, ma, ma. Like whenever I would leave the room when I was there, she'd be like, la, la, la. Like, when are you coming back? So it just makes me so happy. That's so sweet. I love that for so many reasons. I have a tell me something good. Last night, I was so uh, honored to be hosted by Malia Carden, who's on this thread with a few others. And so one, it was nice just to be with people in person for the first time again and actually hug and touch. But two, Malia made us a spread of food and drink that was all summer themed, so intentional, so delicious. And I was just grateful to be in the presence of others with good things to eat and drink. So thank you, Malia. Oh. So lovely. I love that. Malia's got one. I mean, I'll just piggyback off of Melissa because I mean, that was definitely something good last night. Um, it was, you know, and actually it was the second time this week that we actually, that we had people in our home earlier in the week. We had some friends that come over just for a real casual kind of last minute dinner, but still it just, you know, two, twice in one week after almost a year and a half of having nobody in our home except for our immediate family um, was, gosh, I just, good just doesn't even begin <laughs> to describe it. It was pretty amazing. And I got these beautiful flowers at the farmer's market yesterday and they're mm. just bringing, they're bringing me so much joy. I'm going to try and figure out what each one of them is and I'm going to plant them because I've got to have these <laughs> like at my disposal. Amazing. And now it feels like life, life has started. We're back. So grateful. Uh, Margo. I just got to spend a week with the amazing Erin Law. <gasps> after eight months of not seeing each other. <laughs> wow. And uh, it, what, I'm in heaven right now. I'm just in heaven. And, and very, very soon, maybe October, I will get to see the amazing Aaron Law and the amazing Robin Henderson Espinosa, and that will make me very happy. <laughs> That's something good. That is something good. Love it. Aaron, I to piggyback on that. Yeah, I got to follow you. You went before me, mom. It's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say that I just got back from a week in Massachusetts, and it was so lovely and like stress free. And, uh, my mom taught me how to use the sewing machine and made me a shirt that is so awesome. And I feel really excited about that. <laughs> Do you have anything? No, okay. <laughs> Love it. Nathan. Uh, so we've, uh a couple weeks ago moved to Nashville, which is uh, was exciting and fun. And we're, despite all of the insane challenges that we had with the closing and the move and all that kind of stuff, we're just so excited to be here and, and uh, be close to people that we care about. So, um, yay. Yay. That's great news. Anybody else that, as I'm looking at the gallery for Lauren. Okay, good deal, Lauren, you can wrap it up. Okay, great. Thank you for sharing that. Again, I just encourage everyone to be doing this regularly. I know for me, there's been a lot of monotony 
in my life recently. Every day looks a little bit the same at this current season in the Pilney household. So um, I'm definitely trying to be intentional about seeking out those magic moments that are happening all around us if we just keep our eyes open. So thanks for letting us into your worlds and sharing the good that you're seeing. Love it. Thank you, Lauren. Well, our next practice that we do is a land acknowledgement. And I'm always so deeply moved when people do it already intentionally without prompting. And so I'm thankful that some of you already engage with this um, on the call in your introductions. But for the rest of us, a land acknowledgement is a formal statement that recognizes and respects indigenous peoples as traditional stewards of the land and the enduring relationships that exist between indigenous peoples and their traditional territories. So we do this to recognize the land as an expression of gratitude and appreciation to those whose territory you and I reside on as a way of honoring the indigenous people who have been living and working on the land from time immemorial. It's important to understand also the longstanding history that has brought each of us to reside on the land that we do and to seek to understand our place within that history. Land acknowledgements do not exist in a past tense or a historical context. Colonialism is a current ongoing process, as most of us know, and we need to build our mindfulness of our present participation in it. It's also worth noting that acknowledging the land is indigenous protocol. So we as Imaginarium, and as one today who is located in Nashville, Tennessee would like to acknowledge that the land um, I'm meeting on today, and many of us are, is the original homeland of the Cherokee, Chickasaw, Shawnee, and Yuchi tribal nations. We acknowledge the painful history of genocide and forced removal from this territory, and we honor and respect the many diverse indigenous peoples still connected to this land on which we live and gather. Nathan. Uh, yeah, so the next practice that we uh, do is a uh, anti-racism commitment um, and uh, really uh, part of the, the process here is we recognize that this is really the start of our work um, and uh, and not necessarily the, the end. So we'll um, read that now. So <clears throat> we as a community recognize that white supremacy and systemic racism are an insidious part of our society. We recognize the harmful impact of its presence in our lives and the impact it has on Asian American, Pacific Islander, Black, Indigenous, and people of color members of this community and other communities around us. We commit ourselves to an active practice of anti-racism. We commit to uprooting and addressing racism whenever and wherever we find it, starting within each of us and then extending into the, our communities and the greater world around us. And now Leah. Sorry, I'm figuring out my screen. Um, so our last practice, it's just a chance to slow down, get in touch with ourselves and our bodies. Um, and remind ourselves that we are all worthy and valuable um, parts of this world. We're, we're valid and worthy of taking up space in the greater world and also here within our gathering today. Um, so what we're gonna ask everyone to do, if you're able, is to put your two palms to each other and line up your fingers like this. And we're going to tap, um, starting with your pinky and going to your thumb as we say the words, stop, breathe, know your worth. All right, let's do it all together. Stop, breathe, know your worth. All right, one more time. Stop, breathe, know your worth. Sorry, my screen got messed up. Thank you so much, everyone, to lead those practices. Those are just an intentional part of our time. Um, and again, continuing to remind each of us of our inherent magic connection and responsibility.
Um, today is our first online uh, Pride celebration. We always love to do something when we are in person, and unfortunately, we weren't ready to do that in person yet, but we're excited that we could do a form of this online and really excited for um, some special guests that we have with us today. Um, when we were thinking about Pride, hopefully all of you or many of you are on our email list. Um, Robin Henderson Espinoza writes our mind content, and this month um, for our mind content, Robin wrote a beautiful and moving piece um, all about pride and the history of pride and what the heart and intention of pride really is. And it is so much more of just a celebration. Um, it's also a, a protest and acknowledgement of those that have come before us and those in the LGBTQ community, community who have been fighting um, for thriving um, for years and years and years. And it's a, a challenge to the work that still needs to be done. And so today we sort of wanted to capture all all of that or a piece of all of that. Um, one, we wanted to invite some friends on um, from the Nashville LGBTQ community um, and friends of Imaginarium, no doubt, um, who I know that are thriving in some or, or maybe a lot of aspects in their lives. And we just wanted to hear about that joy. Um, and so each of our friends that are joining us today are going to share for just about 10 minutes um, and give us a glimpse, give us a glimpse into the areas of their lives where things are just flourishing. And we just want to hear that. We want to celebrate that. We want to honor that. Um, and then after that, we will challenge each other um, to the work that's ahead of us to get to a place where everyone can thrive. Um, and we'll also hear from them about um, what they think those next steps are that we can do together um, as a collective, as a community, and as individuals um, and commit ourselves to that work. But we're so honored. So these are our six guests. You heard their names um, earlier, but we're really honored. First up is going to be Evan and Elliot Thomas, the Thomas twins. Um, they are a joy. I think they're going to be talking about their work here in Nashville and some of you are familiar with them. Um, they're all around amazing humans. They're also incredible singers and entertainers. Um, and then they're doing incredible work. And so we're gonna hear about that in a minute. And then our next two guests are Dr. Michael J. Jackson and Eric Cox. Um, I first met these gentlemen um, from my time over at Ray of Hope Church, which is a beautiful inclusive church um, down in Antioch. And uh, we became fast friends and, and got to know each other a little bit more online. I stalked each of their Instagrams and continually ask if I can be invited to where they are because they're doing fun things in life. Um, and so we're really excited that these two um, humans, two men and, and two dear friends are going to share a glimpse into their lives. And finally, um, last but not least, Robin Henderson Espinoza. Again, um, hopefully you all know Robin, you know them and their work. They have been a part of the oversight of Imaginarium from day one. Um, they're also a dear friend and our, our ethicist in residence here. And so we're really excited to hear from Robin, but also from Aaron Law, who we, many of us have known Aaron for a long time. We were in a community together um, in the church that many of us were a part of before. And Aaron is doing amazing things continually here in Nashville. If you ever get to spend time around Aaron, you feel nurtured, you feel seen, and you feel challenged. And um, so Robin and Aaron are gonna speak a little bit about their relationship and what they're up to in the world too. So, so honored that each of you are here. They're each going to take, each group is going to take 10 minutes um, ish and uh, share a little piece. So first up is Evan and Elliot. We welcome you two. Hey, hey thank, thank you, you. Melissa. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we do a little song and dance. We didn't prepare that though. So it is what it is. <laughs> um, we are super um, honored and flattered to be um, invited to kind of speak a little bit about what's happening in our own lives. Um, uh, I uh, obviously we're twin brothers, um, both gay men. Um, and, you know, we um, are lucky enough to be working together um, in our careers. Um, we are realtors here in the greater Nashville area. And uh, Elliot kind of has about four to five years on me, I, I moved back to Nashville in 2018 to join him in business. Um, he was doing well enough, but needed some help. And whenever you are in a kind of an independent contractor role like this, kind of owning your own business and you need help, it makes sense to, to bring on someone one that's almost just like you, huh? <laughs> yeah, I, I, the, the opportunity to duplicate yourself in a role where you want to provide the same quality of service and love and injected into every 
dream that we're trying to help people achieve. Um, not many people have that opportunity. So I put a lot of pressure on this one to pick up and come join us here. Um, and just to, I'll, I'll share this bit with, uh, with you, I think in regard to pride and, and identity and, and owning that and being, being comfortable in your own skin. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about my work history and to help you understand the journey it's taken to arrive at this place where, where we're thriving and fulfilling dreams and really being fulfilled by helping people achieve those goals. Um, flashback back to 2000, Eight, roughly. I was just out of college. Um, a lot, my connection with a lot of these people here in this community uh, go back to college. Lauren and I were music majors at Belmont, but we graduated into the recession and it was really tough to find jobs back then. And so I was still selling sunglasses at the Sunglass Hut. I'd taken an assistant manager role in retail just to, to have something to provide and pay off student loans. <laughs> um, but um, during that time, I, I made some connections. At that time, I was not out. Um, I, I was in a relationship. I can't think, I don't know if I was at that specific time and place, but I had some relationships, but they were closeted relationships. You know, I really wasn't comfortable with myself at that time. But I had this one particular individual that was a customer of mine that would come in and visit me at the Sunglass Hut and just speak. Um, and just, we would visit. And one particular time he came in and he asked me, what, uh, can I ask you a personal question? And it was just he and I and in the, the sunglass hut, empty, nobody's buying sunglasses in a recession. Um, and he says, uh, are you gay? And I had never been point blank asked that question before. And I felt the sunglasses in the room all like closing in on me. I was not ready to answer the question, <laughs> but there was this, it was one of the first times I felt comfortable, at least comfortable enough to to, to answer that question boldly. And I, I said, yes. And then the particular individual, um, his name is Jack Miller. Um, he, he said, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make you feel uncomfortable. Uh, we just have a happy hour. We have a happy hour at our house and it's all of our gay friends. And I just wanted you to feel comfortable. I didn't want you to come, uh, come and then you feel out of place or feel uncomfortable. And so it's crazy how our, our world and our lives intersect and cross paths and all of that. That individual is now has been um, very pivotal in my life. He was my real estate mentor. He's the one that got me into this, this um, occupation. Um, I, at the time, whenever I reconnected with Jack or approached him about this career path, he, uh, I had gone through two other jobs, uh, corporate jobs, one, both startup companies in different seasons of their um their age and stage of business and one of them dissolved at the vision i worked for and the other um lost an investor and at that season of my life i just felt so disposable um i you know i felt valuable i felt like i had so much to give but i felt um like i didn't want to continue on a path where i could just be be done at somebody else's decision. And so I was in a position in my life where I was like, where, what's next? And I'd always admired Jack's, Jack's career and what he had built. And so I went to lunch one day and his overwhelming vote of confidence and encouragement really pushed me to give it a shot. Um, and what I learned from that, um, from talking to him and hearing so much encouragement from an inv individual that was so comfortable in his own skin and had built such a great business that was founded on solid uh, solid heart and, and uh, the relationship side of the business. It just was very um, exciting to know that I had somebody in my life that we shared similar visions and could execute uh, and work daily to just do what we felt right in our heart. And we're blessed now to say that, um, you know, Evan and I have been working together for the last three years, but I've been doing this seven and a half years. And every day I wake up, um, work doesn't feel like work. It's, 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 it's a, it's a way to love and it's extension to connect and, and do, and yes, you know, it is work in the sense that there's a monetary element to it, but the way we execute our business is, is relationships. We never see anything as a transactional thing. We really meet people and luckily our, our business is based on referrals. And so a lot of our referrals come from people that we already love and people that, that know us 100% who we are. And they know our heart and we 
are blessed with the opportunity to help people find home. And in a season that is now, after this last year, particularly, home has, has had so much value. It's the one place where people feel, you know, feel safe. It's, 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 the importance of that is just really um, our business, I feel like, has been shaken up a lot this year after people have assessed their home and how much that means to them and what they need to flourish uh, in their home. And so, um, yeah, I'll, I, I, I'll let Evan take it from here and contribute some if, if he's got something to contribute. Yeah, and so one of the, the, the new unique things about our business operation is that Elliot already kind of had a little bit of, uh, um, you know, about three or four years in a business before I came on board. So as I assess the, you know, our situation and the concept of thriving, um, it hasn't always been that way, you know, like there have been times in our life where we haven't felt comfortable being 100%, uh, you know, our authentic selves, but now at this juncture in life, we are, you know, there have been times when we've been working together and working together as siblings has been really hard and I didn't think we were going to be able to make it through that, but we have found um, ways to improve communication and, I, I, and we found our rhythm. And so now finally as siblings, we're thriving, you know, financially we come from, um, a family that that has always kind of had financial hardship and we had to put ourselves through college and, and kind of come into ind our own independence financially and take care of ourselves you know early on in life and so finally we're in a position to not only take care of ourselves but help you know our parents and our families too and so in many ways we are thriving um there are still way opportunities for improvement i think one of the hardest parts right now is that business is so good that it's hard to have work-life balance and to uh, really take care of ourselves and to have time away from work you know the market's really tough right now so it's super demanding and so um it's uh as I, as i was chatting with lauren last night in preparation of this you know quick chat it's like there are some ways that i feel like we're very obviously from a you know promotional standpoint especially on social media thriving, but there are other ways right now that I don't feel like I'm thriving. I need rest, you know, I need time with my people. Um, I need to connect with my family because I miss them, you know, and I, and I need to under, I need to be reminded of what's really mostly, you know, what's most important, you know, in life from time to time, because it's so easy to get kind of locked in and become a kind of a, a prisoner to our work. So um, I want to, talk about thriving but i also want to also say you know vulnerability <laughs> this this is real um but i will say if, if you want to focus on the thriving i think evan came from a corporate background where he felt oftentimes like a hamster in a wheel uh and i you know i'd felt that way myself but i think the one piece that feels that that is thriving the most is the the ability to be in a position to do things for people and work not feel like that is I feel like we're thriving in the sense that we're feel, we're doing the work that we've been called to do, um, and that's to love people. And we love people through this special opportunity to oftentimes help them invest in their largest investment in their life. And we're grateful for the the chances, the referrals. There's a lot of people in this group that have been encouraging to us throughout the years. I know Abby. I remember having a dinner with Abby Lane a few years ago where we just talked about home and. She was an encouraging piece, you know, earlier on in my career. And so I just, I'm just grateful for community um, like this uh, that, that loves people where they are, uh, pushes them and helps them whenever they need the boost. And um, just if there's a way for us to give back in, in our services to you individually, we, we'd love the opportunity to do that. that. By all means, I don't want you to see that as a, an, uh, a push for business, but I just, I want you to be aware that there are individuals out there um, that that care beyond the transaction that it is that it is a it's it's there's that it's also a safe space we find a, a lot of lgbtq plus people um want to work with people they can feel comfortable and vulnerable and safe with as they're trying to find a place that they can call home so uh i see other people that have been supportive in our own journey jj you often tell me tell us we need a tv show so we're still trying to work on that brother you you, <laughs> we'll, we'll let you know and um our Lauren has been a client of ours and a big supporter and referral source. And my partner, Lee Bryan, has popped on the call. So you may see his name down there. He's calling in from Auburn, Alabama, um, just to kind of be supportive. He, we share custody of my golden doodle. And so as we're sharing gratitudes, thank you for being a great partner and doggy daddy, Lee. Yeah, happy Father's Day, Lee. <laughs>
All right, I think maybe our 10 minutes is up. So let us know, Melissa, yeah. if we're done. If the clock <laughs> is oh, we, we don't want to take up too much space. No, <laughs> they're, that's they're taking up a so... lot in this little box. <laughs> Y'all, thank you so much. That was so moving and I deeply, and I know this community deeply appreciates your vulnerability and you being authentic. And um, I love that you brought up, you said something earlier on one of you about being non-transactional and man, if that is not the ethos we're trying to get across to ourselves in this community and to the rest of the world that to live into an abundance mentality, not a scarcity mentality and not do things in a transactional way. So I so appreciate you bringing that up. Um, I love that you also brought up just the idea of thriving in that yes, and in many ways, people not being able to thrive has to do with culture and systems and things that are outside of ourselves that are stopping us or, or LGBTQ plus people or black people or you know so on and so forth to not be able to thrive. Also, there's sometimes that it's up to us, like there's a work-life balance that we are responsible for um, that are in many ways learning how to say no to things or learning how to say yes to the right things has to do to help us thrive as well. So I'm so thankful that you brought that up. Um, we cheer you on. We're going to give space in just a moment for people to offer commentary or ask questions or um get pushback but the one question not pushback that's this isn't a time for that the push one back. question I have, though, let's go <laughs> that's what i normally have to say when i'm speaking what pushback do you have for me um no but the one question i'm gonna ask each of the the duos is also just when when you think about when you feel like you're thriving um how does it actually feel in your body so if the first word that comes to your mind or a few words i'm really interested in what the two of you when you're when you feel like you're thriving in a moment what does that feel like in an industry where it's easy to get caught up in numbers, I think Elliot and I truly feel that we're thriving whenever we have that tangible feeling and satisfaction of like helping people and, and that being experienced collectively. Like that's where we get to like have these moments with our clients and we recognize we cross the finish line and that they've done something truly spectacular, something that they've wanted for their entire lives. For me personally, that moment is whenever I, I'm reminded that I'm thriving. Um, it's easy to look at numbers and be like, okay, we've met these goals and we're exceeding these goals, but um, I feel it more whenever we have those moments. I feel yesterday was a really tough day for me. Um, beautiful, wonderful couple that had, uh, adopted their, um, their daughter. Uh, they were neighbors of ours. We we got them under contract for this house. They'd already sold their other house and we were, we were helping them pursue this other uh, house that they were in love with. Uh, but unfortunately, the, there were some complications with the lending, particularly with communication where there was a ball dropped and it was a solid deal, but yesterday it fell apart. And that's you know, life, it happens. Uh, but for me, I, I felt like I was thriving because I knew 100% I was doing everything in my power to keep things the best they could and to try to keep the train on track. So like I, I received a text late last night from that client just expressing their gratitude. Um, and, and they, you know, watching from the sidelines, me doing everything that I could to try to help them. You know, like it wasn't a winning situation, but I felt like I was thriving because they understood and saw how much I was going to bat for them. And at the end of the day, it's not about winning the house, but it's about taking care of your people and loving them and showing that love through how hard and what, how many hours it's going to take, you know, like to get, to try, 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 you know, it's, uh, it was an unfortunate situation, but I still feel, felt like I was thriving because they understood that they saw it and they felt it. And that, that's enough for me. I love it. That's also you and your purpose, you know, when you're living out your purpose, you're thriving. So I love it. Well, thank you both. Again, hopefully, I know one of you at least can stay on. Speaking of work-life balance, one of you needs to go maybe work on contracts. So we do you know, one, like one offer to write. So it's a beautiful <laughs> lesbian couple. They have a son. They're moving their mother here to help care for him. So everybody, good energy. We got this. <laughs> So whoever can stay, we're grateful for who needs to leave and we're grateful who can stay, but um, thank you both for sharing. Thank you all okay, for your time. Thank you guys. Thank you. Um, moving on over to uh, Mr. Jackson and Cox, these two dear friends. Um, I am just so grateful that you jumped on. They, I think you both, did you both get to come to Winter Song? One of you, Eric, you did, right? I feel like one of you have been able to be a part of 
something we've done before, but forgive me. Yeah. If yeah. 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 I was okay. there for the winter, the winter, winter two song. Years ago, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lovely, lovely. Okay, well, we're so glad we got you both in this time. And um, take it away, gentlemen. Tell us about your thriving. Oh, I will pass it off to uh, MJ first to kick us off, unless you want me to tip off. Either or is fine. I'll... You would do that, best friend. Go um, ahead. <laughs> good afternoon, everyone. First, Melissa, thank you so much for being the visionary of this very beautiful and unique space. I have not participated in a forum like this before, and I'm really honored to be here and that you've asked me uh, to speak. Pardon me if you see me wiping my eyes and my nose is sniffing. I didn't want to, you know, not be on camera. I didn't want to cancel, but it was important for me to be here. But my allergies are acting crazy today. Um, <clears throat> when I think about thriving and when I thought about uh, it, I could not ascribe it to one particular area of my life. And, you know, people might look at me and assume, you know, because I'm a minister or a licensed minister or, you know, because I have a doctorate degree, um, that those are the things that I truly take pride in. But I have survived some very tough times in my life. And when I think about how that makes me feel in my body and what thriving feels like in my body, thriving for me feels like hope. There's a, a scripture in the book of Ecclesiastes that says to him that is among the living, there is hope. A live dog is better than a dead lion. And, you know, when I think about that and we look at that scripture, in essence, what it's saying is if you've got life in your body, if you've got breath in your body, whether, you know, uh, like Paul said, I've learned to abound and I've learned to be a base. I've learned how to live humbly and I've learned how to live in prosperity. Um, but in whatever situation I have been in, in whatever situation I am in, I've learned to be content. My life as an academic is very interesting. My life as a believer in Christ is very interesting. I graduated high school with barely a 2.0 GPA. I've been expelled from school before. I never liked school. I didn't have a favorite subject. The only reason I got into college is because I had a vocal scholarship and I flunked out my freshman year, all Fs. And um, the Lord, you know, people, I don't know what people ascribe to, but for me, it has been, you know, the gospel of Jesus Christ, but I can only attest to how life-changing it has been for me. And, you know, when I met Christ and Christ turned my life around, I went from a, a student who never, ever made honor roll before to when I got back in school, you know, making the dean's list, going from the dean's list to straight A's. And I, I went from flunking out of a, uh, a, a university that, that, you know, is reputably they let anyone in. Um, but I'm very thankful for that because from there, I, I have met mentors and people who have been so life-changing. And I went on to Vanderbilt on a full scholarship. Um, academic scholarship, monthly stipend. I've recently earned my doctorate degree uh, in educational leadership from Trebekah. And, you know, this is, this is a, a student that, you know, I went and saw my assistant principal from middle school, Mr. Conley, he had tears in his eyes. And he said, you know what, Michael, I thought you'd be locked up by now. So for me, when I think about thriving, I think about the fact that, you know, I've, I've been here before. I've been at the top of my game before I've lost it all. Um, when I first got to church, the first day I, I went to vacation Bible school with my friends, I wasn't a church baby. My mom and dad didn't bring me. I cussed the minister out in vacation Bible school and got put out of vacation Bible school. Okay. And, you know, that, but it just shows you the spectrum of my life and my experiences. And so, you know, uh, I'm not sure that I'll always be a, a, a big earner. I'm not sure what tomorrow hold, holds for me. But what I am sure of is that my life is in God's hands and there's hope. And regardless of what happens to me today, if I lose it all, I've seen the hand of God in my life and there's hope for me. And so that's what I think about for thriving. I, I don't want to attribute to a success because it could be gone tomorrow. It could be frowned upon tomorrow. It's the fact that I believe that he who is within me is greater than he who is within the world and that tomorrow holds something better for me. So um, that's my portion. I will defer to my best friend. Thank you for leading me in, Bess, uh, as we come into the saying of uh, you go left, I go right. I'll go right here. <laughs> so uh, blessings to each of you. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Um, I, I am termed a light worker. Many of you are light workers. So just this opportunity, is, it's such a blessing. Sometimes uh, you don't know what you're coming into, which I didn't know what I was coming into, but I'm so glad I was invited here. And it's so good to see the just the beauty, just being reminded that the world is beautiful. We're often shown the ugliness 
of the world and the worst of the worst, but uh, truly there's beauty. So kicking off for me, uh, I'll just give you a zip code. So 37208 is where I was born and raised and it looks very different uh, and it costs very different from when I was born and raised there. I'm a little bitter about how much it's come up since I've left because if you look in the news, just even a couple of years ago, there was a news article that you can check out on uh, Google or Bing it. And it said 37208 was one of the highest crime areas in the country, in the country, not Baltimore, not Detroit, Nashville, Tennessee, 37208. Um, and that's where I grew up. I didn't know any different, didn't know any better. Uh, hearing about shootings, someone getting shot, stabbed, killed was normal for me. Hearing about someone getting robbed was normal for me. These were norms. And, you know, coming from that to just on yesterday, me and my partner who's on here now, so Julian J. Walker, uh, we own our own photo booth business called ENJ's Photo Booth. And to be celebrating that as a black man, uh, as a business owner, uh, a legal business owner, um, uh, and to be doing it with my gay partner as a gay couple on Juneteenth, I was like, this is, this is the dream. This is excellent, awesome, wonderful, and humbling. And there's still more work to be done, but that, that's, that's thriving for me. That is taking, um, uh, you know, some people talk about uh, the silver platter. We had like plastic, the plastic platter, if you will, growing up. So going from there to where we are today, I am today, it's such a blessing. I wrote down a couple of things. I was like, what would I talk about? for five minutes, which is this much time for me, because I can go on and on and on. I am a speaker. My day-to-day -day role, I am a director for um, uh, an addiction company. So we, we work with those who struggle with substance abuse, so alcohol, substance abuse. I'm the director of training and development for that company. And we also run our ENJ's photo booth. We also have now another business that we're branching off called ENJ's Dispatch. Uh, shameless plugs here. So uh, ENJ's uh, dispatch.com, that website's out. Uh, and then I also have a book out. I published a book and that launched during, you guessed it, 2020. <laughs> right at the kickoff. I was like, okay, God, I get it. So uh, yeah, sign up's the name of the book. Just, just published a book called Sign Up, uh, which stands for, so sign up is set intentional goals now to unlock your potential. And I teach, I coach, I train. I'm always teaching. That's just what I do. You can find that on ericlcox.com, by the way. So ericlcox.com. Thank you. Peace and blessings. Um, so those are all the little shameless plugs. What I want to bring here, whenever I come on any sort of setting, I always, I always want to dump value on people because I know what it's like to just kind of sit and listen to people brag about themselves, which is what I don't want to do. Um, I do want to share with you all that the biggest piece of my life that I would say is the most successful is my mental health. Mental health which each of you can take away. After the end of this, you can take away, you can immediately, everybody on this call can immediately implement better mental health practices. And if I leave here and you remember anything from me, the one thing I want you to remember is you are enough. That's it. Everything you're needing, everything you want, you have access to today. Not tomorrow, you don't need another degree, you don't need another training. You have everything you need today. You can tap in whenever you want to. You can plug in whenever you want to. And so I call my mornings, my mornings, I wake up at 6, 8, 6 a.m. And the first hour and a half of the day is my time, is what I call winning the day. And when I finish my routine, which I'll share with you, I'll say, I won the day. I can't control anything that happens outside of this house. When I walk out into the world, there's so much craziness that happens. Uh, I have my agenda. I have my plan for the day. Usually by the time I get to work, that has changed and transformed. It's no longer my agenda. Somehow or another, someone hijacks something from me, whether in work, personal life, or the family, just some chaos in the world, some political crap. It gets hijacked. So I have to center myself every morning. I have to make sure I'm in the right energy space every morning. And so I win my day. Every day I wake up at 6 a.m., I pop up. I put my phone, by the way, before I go to bed, a little tip for you, for those who struggle with waking up early. I put my phone away from me that forces me to have to get out of my bed and go turn my alarm off. So I have to walk somewhere. Otherwise, I'll just roll over, press snooze, 
15, 25 times and then wake up 10 minutes before I'm supposed to be up. So I win the day, I wake up at six, I pop up, I go get to my phone, I turn the alarm off, I go into a separate room, uh, which is what we call our uh, pillow room, and I do meditation, and I do deep breathing, uh, belly breaths, uh, meditation. And I do that for, on a good day, I get 20 minutes in uh, or longer, but we're just breathing. That's it, because you wake up with so many energies. You wake up with some crazy dream you had. And if you're not clearing that out, you take that energy you can out into the world and, and you're not focused and you're kind of all over the place and people call it waking up on the wrong side of the bed. It's like, no, you just woke up and you didn't do practices to clear all that out and get your chakras aligned. And so I wake up, I breathe, deep belly breaths, four or six second cycles. After I do that, I will go downstairs and I exercise. Uh, I exercise for about 20, 25 minutes. And uh, while I'm exercising, I have this trampoline. So it's what's called a rebound trampoline. So it's a jumping. And it's actually the, uh, proven scientifically. It's the most effective, most efficient, safest exercise ever, a trampoline. And I just jump. And I watch cartoons because I love anime. So I'm a dork. Uh, and I and self proclaim um, dork. And I watch a uh, Naruto little ninja show while I jump. And that's my joy in the morning. I'm watching TV. And I'm working out, so that's a win-win. I will eat a banana, I drink some coffee, and it's quiet. And we have a little garden in the back, and so I'll just look out, sometimes just look outside and look at nature, look at trees, and just remember that there's so much more. It's so much bigger than just me, and my day, and my issues, and my problems. And I'm reminded that we're all connected, right? Uh, it's quiet, no one's up. Um, uh, my boyfriend is not a morning person. So it's extremely sleepy. My dog is kind of like a little human. So he, he also sleeps in. Um, and then after that's over with, I read something new. I learn something new each day. I take 20 minutes to learn something new. I read something new. I'm focusing on my business uh, for the day. And after that practice is over with, I'm like, you know what? Things might go, you know, uh, 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 um, subjectively good today or subjectively bad today, but it doesn't matter because I've won the day already because I've centered myself. And I do gratitude practices and I journal a little while for five minutes at least, just writing down thoughts. And sometimes I don't even know what I'm gonna write. I just start writing. And it's like the spirit enemy just knows what to talk about. And I'm just writing to, uh, um, you know, I would call God or, or you know, um, I heard it said the other day, my, my boyfriend does interviews and uh, he was talking to a, a speaker who said, uh, writing to your higher self. So I write to my higher self. That's it. That's the win for me. It's just remembering again, I'm enough. Uh, daily practices in the morning time help me win the day. And when you are centered and you're physically healthy and you feel good, you can take on anything. You can conquer anything. And it's from that place that I'm able to, um, uh, uh, what people would consider thriving financially and all these other little areas. The only way I can do that though is by centering myself because it allows me to be creative then. Because if I wake up with stress and I leave out with stress, my mind's on stress. And I'm not creative when I'm stressed. And I'm not creative when I'm anxious. I'm thinking about tomorrow or I feel bad about yesterday. I wipe all that away through breathing in the morning. Breathing, gratitude practices, as uh, someone was sharing earlier, I appreciate that practice. I'm just learning to say thank you because you may never even reach that big ultimate goal we all have, we all search for and reach for every day. Like, oh, if I can just get this, or when I get this, you may never get there. I may be gone tomorrow. I might be dead, drop dead after this call. I don't know. So what I have to do is just take account for what I have now and be grateful for what I have now. And that does it for me. And I'm grateful, period. You don't need any more. Happiness is a choice. You make that decision. And we all make that decision every day. It's a daily manage, management activity. That's all I got, Melissa, because I'll sit up here and preach all day long. So yeah, breath work, journal, get a therapist, by the way. If you don't have a therapist, don't be ashamed of a therapist. I'm a black man, a black gay man in the Bible Belt. I have a therapist. I have a black therapist with dread just like me. You can pick who you like, but find somebody you can bounce off because you can have all the money in the world and be you know, successful and be dealing with demons that you don't know how to deal with. And it will take you out and have taken many out in this world. So that's all I got. Uh, you all be blessed. Thank you so much for this time, Melissa. Thank you. Thank you both so, so, so much. Uh, so much to take away from what you both said. Michael, I love that you said that thriving feels like hope. 
thriving feels like hope um, and to watch you step into your fullness. Um, and then also, Eric, every bit of that practical advice as you gave us a glimpse into your mornings that we can all apply to our lives as well. So, so grateful for both of you. Um, you've got some people commenting in the chats too. I want to make sure y'all are aware of that. Also, uh, I will, Eric, thank you for sharing all those websites and whatnot. We need to put all of that in the chat. And if our speakers are okay, we'll put all of that in the email that goes out in the morning as well. So you all can follow and get up with everybody. Okay, last and certainly not least, Dr. Robin and Aaron. We can't wait to hear about how you are thriving in your lives. Thank you, it's good to be here. Um, I'm missing being in person like many of you. Um, I wanna pick up on a theme that the Thomas twins started with, which is relationality. I'm trained as a theologian and ethicist. And in my area of study, which is virtue theory, um, there is a Greek word, uh, eudonomia, which means flourishing. So sort of everything that I do, I'm thinking about flourishing uh, or thriving. And when I, um, I was on faculty in Berkeley after I finished my PhD, I thought it'd be queer utopia. I thought it'd be the place to be, right? I'd be sitting in avant-garde cafes, uh, talking theory and politics and, it happened to be one of the most loneliest places um, for me. And so after the 2016 election, I decided to move home to the South. Uh, I'm from Northern Mexico, the Republic of Texas, and um, didn't want to return to Texas because of some of their politics. Decided to move to, to Tennessee. Uh, surprise, many of the similar politics are here uh, this year in Tennessee. Uh, in terms of anti-trans bills. Uh, but I, I left um, after the election and arrived in Nashville in 2017. And I decided to launch my academic scholarship as a collaborative project dedicated to social healing. So we do public theology initiatives through podcasts, through speaking, writing, et cetera. And um, I'm at five on the Enneagram, which means I spend a lot of time in my head and not a lot of time in my body. And I knew that um, activist theology needed to be more than just a thinking project, but I didn't know where to find that. And many of my friends and colleagues are people with very fancy letters behind their name. Uh, they are also not deeply embodied. Um, and I went to a Jewish retreat center up in rural Connecticut and was introduced to uh, somatics. And I thought, this is the missing piece. But how do I find someone to do somatics? And um, not long after, I it was in um, 2018, um, I did a dismantling supremacy culture workshop at Imaginarium. And was introduced to Aaron. And I, I say that in that way because my flourishing or my thriving in my vocation as a public theologian, as a professor at Duke, um, is largely rooted in how I spend my mundane time. Um, I love to read, I'm an intense introvert, I love brown liquor. Um, but at the end of the day, um, how am I flourishing in the small things? Another way to say this is, how am I being faithful in, in the small things? And long story short, I, um, my last long-term relationship a partner to whom I was married was very antagonistic toward my vocation and you know, didn't want me to go on the job market, didn't want me to like live out this thing that I had spent my entire life working toward. And so I categorically swore off white women and didn't, and didn't date white women um, for about four years. Because for me, there was, there was this thing about how do I hold the integrity of myself as a mixed race Latina, as a trans person and as a queer person, in an interpersonal relationship with someone who doesn't support my flourishing in my vocation. And so Erin was the first white woman that I dated after, after that hiatus of not dating white women. And I quickly found that um, the interpersonal uh, flourishing 
happens um, so acutely in the in the mundane. Mm -hmm. And so in the tea times at High Garden, which is no longer here mm -hmm. because of the tornado, but or or in the dinners at Fifth and Taylor, or just in these small moments of grace, I think is where I found the flourishing. Obviously, in the before times, I was on the road 300 days out of the year. And so I was not in Nashville a lot, uh, but the small moments of grace that I got with Aaron um, in 2019 showed me that flourishing can actually happen in vocation with another person. And so I feel really thankful to um, be in relationship not just in work, uh, but also in play with Aaron and um, have a lot of gratitude for them. <laughs> mm, what do I add? Um, yeah, I think it's really cute that we met at Imaginarium. So just want to say that again, <laughs> if you didn't catch it the first time. <laughs> um it was uh we always people ask us how we met and we always just say dismantling supremacy culture because <laughs> that's what the name of the workshop was um yeah and i think what i found through being in relationship with robin um is this sturdiness this steadiness um in, in psychology, people talk about this as a secure attachment uh, where you know that you can go off and do your own thing and you can trust that you can come back, um, where you know that you may really disagree on a lot of things and you still have each other's integrity um, in the forefront um, of your focus. And, um, yeah, I think this is probably the first relationship in, in my life where I really feel that way. Um, and for me, like I am very relationship centered, uh, like to me, everything is about relationships and sort of a fractal sense. So like they can be the tiniest thing, you know, like a, the butterfly effect, like how a butterfly's wings might change the weather and um, and create tsunamis. Um, so such a small thing can affect something so big. And so, um, you know, for me, it feels really important to, to be rooted in, um, in a romantic relationship and also in a working partnership uh, where we, we really do actually center that value. Um, and so that feels like thriving to me. Um, and I, I do, uh, as Robin mentioned, somatics, which um, is I think this term that has been kind of thrown around these days quite a bit. And um, I kind of understand that as, as being able to really locate um, the, the inner landscape uh, of our experience. So like Eric was talking about um, that meditation in the morning, um, if you spend that time really uh, like sensing inward, then um, things can release in this really subtle way that maybe they wouldn't um, if you were to just wake up and, and let your feet hit the ground and just run. Um, and so for me, everything is about sensation and body and how does it feel in your body? And, um, and so, you know, what I, I think I can say, uh, because unfortunately, you know, I think both Robin and I understand the, the feeling of the opposite of thriving in our bodies, um, which can feel like stress responses, you know, um, it can feel like shutting down, freezing, uh, it can feel like anxiety, um, it can feel like a lot of things. And so, so for me, I, I know what thriving feels like because it's a very distinct sensation. Um, and I would describe it with two words, um, aliveness um, and spaciousness in, in my body. Um, and I feel those things uh, often. 
with this human right here and just with this space that we've created um, and the respect that we have for each other and the work that we do um, and how that work intersects and how it's different. Um, yeah. Oh, we're getting a phone call. <laughs> that, that's, that's what I have to add. Thanks for witnessing us, y'all. Mm. Be here. So grateful for the two of you. And I love how, um, not necessarily intentional on my part, but how all of you sort of covered sort of the spectrum of life, where our work life, our interior life, our individual life, and our relational life, and, and seeing the beauty uh, played out in, in each of your stories and your relationships is so moving. Um, so thank you on behalf of this community. Um, I want to be a respecter of everyone's time. I know we really have five minutes left, but I wonder if, if our, for our special guest, um, if any of you would offer, um, first and foremost, maybe a word of encouragement to um, other others that are on this call and who maybe later would watch this YouTube. You know, we have a few people that watch post um, gathering. Um, but for those that are in the LGBTQ uh, community, uh, a word of encouragement to those who maybe do not feel like they're thriving or are just needing encouragement in general. So that's maybe my first ask. And then also, um, secondarily, uh, a word of challenge for those of us that are allies in how we can continue to be um, of help to partner support um, and, and help others to thrive. So this is popcorn style if any of you want to add anything um, or say anything and then we'll open it up to others to speak back to you all encouragement and or questions. I'll dive in, that's fine. Mine will be, this will be very short. So uh, I would say for someone watching that is needing a little bit of encouragement, just to remember you're enough and to remember you are wonderfully made. You are beautifully made. You are made with purpose, with intention, on purpose uh, by the same creator who made all things. And so walking in that should bring some sense of uh, clarity for your life. But yeah, you're beautiful, period, just the way you are. The second part of that would be uh, for me in terms of the LGBT community and, and, and you know, for Nashville, for the greater community, it's just uh, equity over equality. So that would be the biggest piece for us, yeah. The resources we need for us to thrive. Lovely, thank you, thank you, thank you, Eric. Yes, please, Aaron. Back on. <laughs> Wait, what was the first question again? Because I had something. It was so well, first to those that are in the community already listening. Oh like yes, yes. Call. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. So I feel like a big um, one of the most important things for me is discernment, um, which isn't something that we always talk about. But there, there are safe places, safer places to come out and be your authentic self, and there are places where you may encounter harm, and so. Um, talk about trusting the body, I think, listen, begin to listen and develop that um, awareness of, of that inner landscape, because your body is always telling you if this is safe or not. Um, and even if your body is wrong um, and, and everything is just fine, um, there's something intuitively there. So I just would want to encourage people to like listen in and um, and to seek the spaces where you really feel like you can be your authentic self. Um, and then I just like, if anyone has any influence for our, for our allies over like, <laughs> just, just how the language is unfolding in our like public service, like arenas and environments. Um, it's just amazing how many times like we're in the South and people are so, um, you know, focused on hospitality and wanting you to feel welcome. And, um, and so often that looks like calling someone ma'am or sir. Um, and, and I just wonder if there's a way that we could use y'all in, in a really sweet way. Um, and, and if you have influence over like, for instance, servers at a restaurant, like if you're a manager there, can you talk to them about, you know, hey, like, are there ways that you could talk to the people at your table without using pronouns? Um, uh, that's kind of what I have. Anything to add? Well, I mean, I think, um, I mean, I like what um, Eric had to say about 
equity over equality, you know, the where we're subject to these neoliberal val values that that actually um, don't afford us equity. Um, and and I think that um, we need practices and we need community structures that create conditions for equity because equality is just a code word for tolerance as is diversity and so um obviously our black siblings certainly our black trans siblings our latinx trans siblings uh need greater access and and more structures um instead of barriers and um I'm not convinced that things like the human rights campaign is going to create those conditions, but it's moments like these in community where we're able to harness relationships. The way equity happens is through relationship. Equality happens through legislation, but it's coded, right? It's codified by a legal system that is not gonna produce equity. Um, so I, you know, I think that we all should be asking the question about flourishing and, and not just how do I flourish, but how do we flourish? Um, and when we are flourishing, uh, then we're a little bit closer to something like equity. Mm -hmm. So good, y'all. It's going to be hard yeah, to follow yeah. that with my elementary um, approach to that question here, but I think as I assess where I've been and where I am now and, and um, the difference in, in my own assessment of, of like, was I thriving then? Am I thriving now? As I, I think for a long time in many facets of my life, both personally and professionally, I allowed fear to steer decision-making um, and, and comfort was a major factor in that. And so, and hearing everyone else uh, kind of talk about um, and encouragement, I just would kind of, encourage everyone to kind of assess what is fear holding you back from, you know, how, and, and, and how can you work with that and with yourself to uh, move beyond it, to find opportunities, you know, to thrive. I was lucky enough to have my brother as a, to piggyback into this industry that has created so much freedom for me, both personally and for professionally, but um, that's, uh, that's my take on your question. So thank you, Melissa. Lovely, Michael. Really, yes. Yeah, so. really quickly. I know I want to be respectful of everyone's time, but I encourage you to find your purpose because when you find your purpose, it doesn't matter whether you win or lose, whether they accept you or not, whether you're, you know, invited or not, you know your purpose. Um, find your purpose and learn to love yourself and spend time with who you are, knowing that you won't be this version of yourself forever. Mm -hmm. And that's where that hope comes in because you might be up today and down tomorrow. But if you got hope, if you got hope, you got something in you that's going to keep you going forward and keep you driving. You might get a no on Monday, Tuesday morning, you'll be back out there, you know, because you've got hope. So know your purpose and have hope. Um, for our allies, practice kindness, whether it's a smile, a gentle word, a compliment, holding a door, buying a coffee. It doesn't always cost money, but practice kindness. We could use a little more of that. Thank you. Beautiful. So uh, with at least your hands, let's please thank everyone that was here today and that spoke. We are so, so grateful. I would love if you're willing our, our guests to put in the chat um, ways that they can contact you, be it social media or an email um, or your website. Um, I'm going to close our time officially together, but I know probably a lot of people might have questions and or just encouragement and commentary. So if there's a way that people can send that to you, I want to open that because I know some of you need to get off the call. And again, I'm so grateful that everyone was here and that we've even gone over a couple minutes. Um, as everyone's putting that in the chat, please, again, we'll also share that in the email tomorrow, if that's okay with everyone. If for any reason it's not, just let me know. Um, 
by way of thinking about the future, please get on our email list. If you aren't already, we send out just a Monday email in the rotation of mind, body, soul, and community. Um, and these are just practical little reminders and quotes and things to listen to and music, whatnot. Um, always a good content email. Uh, Robin does our mind email. Roshanda Brown often does our body email. I do our soul email. And then community is just ways for us to stay connected. Um, and speaking of ways to stay connected, we're so excited that coming up in September, we are going to gather in person again. Um, we're going to be at Collective 615 on September 26th. If you want to mark your calendar, September 26th at Collective 615. Um, there'll be more things with that. We're going to do that right after um, Nashville Pride um, is meeting September 18th and 19th, where we will have a booth at that. We're always excited to have a booth there. We color dust people and affirm them in their inherent worth, connection, and responsibility. It's always literally a magical time um, for both those of us that get to serve those people and, and show kindness, as Michael just said, and for those that get to experience it. So we're going to do our first gathering after that to hopefully invite some people into it. Um, and also uh, Black Nashville Pride is October 8th through 10th. So also put that down on your calendars. Um, and we can find ways for those of us that are whites and allies that we can support um, and, and show support and celebrate with that as well. Um, I think that's it. We were going to show a song, but I'm going to wait and do that later just because um, I know, again, some of you need to get off. So let's end our formal time together with a toast. Again, honoring each and every one of you that were part of this call. We believe each and every one of us is equally inherently magical and worthy, but also really thankful for those of you that shared um, our special guests for giving us a glimpse into their lives. Um, our toast is just a quote by Maya Angelou that says, my mission in life is not merely to survive, but to thrive and to to do so with passion, some compassion, some humor, and some style. May it be so. Cheers, friends. Lovely. You can unmute if you need to leave. We bid you farewell and have a lovely evening. If you want to stay on, Leah is going to host us for the next 30 minutes or so just to chat and keep connecting. Um, so again, we're formally done, but thank you so much for being here.